Hi, Lars. How's it going, buddy? Good to have you on. And uh, I can see you're chilling out somewhere. Tell us where you are and where, how you got yeah, here. Yeah, so we're just um, just in the hotel room right now. Uh, we arrived two o'clock in the morning local time, uh, which was like was that seven seven a.m. UK time. So um, I haven't had much sleep. Um, I had to have breakfast and be up at eight for um, the athletes meeting. Done that, and now um, I'm just going to talk to you guys and head to lunch. And then I've got um, medicals, uh, interviews, TV interviews, digital interviews. I booked in for a massage as well. So just try and get the body kind of nice and relaxed. Mm -hmm. But um, today, yeah, just going to try and chill out as much as I can and just get my body feeling ready to start the comp on Thursday. Nice. So is that, are people still arriving or is that every all the athletes there now? No, I, I think um, all the athletes here now. I think I was one of the last to arrive, to be honest. Okay. And how long was your journey? Well, from leaving my house to 23 hours. Right, wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. We, we, we had to have two flights, um, which was annoying because we're flying from Heathrow. You'd think you'd get a direct flight. Yeah. But no, World Strongest Man wanted to send me all over the place. And then we had delays. <laughs> the scenic route. Yeah, but it's, it's all right. Well, you know, I'm used to traveling and stuff like that, so. Okay. And who are you out with, with Liz, or? Yeah, Liz is just over there. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She's in charge of my um, YouTube page today, so. I'm not very technically minded, though. It's not going well. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. And how, just out of interest, then, how, how do you find, you know, how much does this affect then your competition? You know how you just told us about this massive journey and all these things. You've got such a busy day and, you know, talking to us as well as all these other interviews. How do you find, does that affect your mindset? Does that affect your prep coming into something like this? Do you, do you... No, me mentally I've been very focused on this comp. Um, this has been my goal all year is to be at my, my kind of peak performance for World's Strongest Man. And obviously I'm very experienced. You know, it's the 12th time I've qualified, 11th time mm -hmm. competing at Worlds. So I've got that experience. I'm pretty kind of relaxed most of the time anyway I try not to let things get to me that are out of my control so um, I, I, I feel good you know I, I, I'll make sure tonight and tomorrow night I get bed and night's sleep um, I'm trying to make sure I get my food in today and, and just stay hydrated but um, I, I want to get some treatment just so my body's feeling a bit better I just feel a bit like twisted I could do it like an adjustment from a chiropractor a bit mm -hmm. of a rub down but by the time it comes to competition day on Thursday I'll be ready to go okay cool and Talking about the competition then, um, having a wee look at the qualifying rounds, um, from what we've seen of you and what you're, what we know of uh, of you and your training and your records, it looks like pretty good events for you. Yeah, definitely. I mean, a lot of people, I've got a very tough group. I've got um, the guy that came second and the guy that came fifth last year, Kilius Koski and um, J.F. Curran. Yeah. So those two are like are, are the heavy favourites to get through the group in terms of you know what people are talking about but i honestly believe with these events i can win the group yes you know, they're, they're um events i've beaten not just those two but everyone in the world out you know I, yeah. i'm a really good prop puller things like farmers walk and yoke i've got world records on yeah i thought I've, that was that was know, like ideal for you those two that's, it is. that's made I, for I you found, it's interesting i found the actual event today obviously at the athletes meeting but it's a little bit different to what we're expecting it's 160 kilo farmers for 15 meters and then there's one yoke that weighs 100, and f sorry, 450 kilos. Right. Is, is going to be eight to ten meters. And then there's a mm. 595 kilo yoke for three to five meters. They, they haven't decided on the um the, the lengths yet. But uh, it's, it's a little bit interesting. I wasn't expecting wow, yeah. it so heavy, mm -hmm. but it's always a good event for me. An event I'll be going in, you know, aiming to win. Wow, that is interesting. Yeah, yeah. I never thought so. So it'll be done like a, I presume, like a, a medley. You'll do the farmers and then a yoke and then a yoke type idea. Is that the? Yeah, I, I, get, I mean, I was expecting it to be like either yoke into farmers or farmers into yoke. Yeah, that's what I thought. But um, to, to have the lighter yoke and then, I mean, say light, it's still 450 <laughs> kilos. And then, then an almost 600 kilo yoke. I mean, but I got the world record on the 580 kilo yoke in Dubai yeah. in October last year. So it's an event. I would have liked to have known the weight. To, I probably would have gone a bit heavier in training. I focused more on speed, whereas when it's that heavy, it's it, you need to, mm. to be able to pick it up and control it. But I've picked up that weight before, so it's not like something I've never done before. Yes. And um, you know, I, I, I'm always hard to beat on those type of events. So Kilius Koski is very, very good as well. I'd say him and me are probably the you know number one and two in the world at that type of event. Mm -hmm. If I can get the win on him on that, and if I can beat him on the truck pool, I genuinely believe I can win the group. Yes, yeah, I can see 
I can see why you're saying that, yeah. And and the other events we've got deadlift for reps. Yeah, um, heavy deadlift, three hundred and seventy kilos for reps, which again suits me more than a lighter deadlift. I, I don't like doing lots of reps. I like things to right. be heavy and hard. So um, JF Karan's an unbelievable deadlifter. I'd expect him to win the group on the deadlift. But if I could take second place on that, I'll be I'll be very happy. Okay, and overhead press. I believe it's a choice between a. Is it, is it either going to so be a we, dumbbell we or a log? We found this out today. Group okay. one, two, and three have log for reps, and group four and five, I mean group four, yes. has dumb, a hundred kilo dumbbell for reps. I've been practicing both because um, I expected in the the medley in the final there was going to be a log and a dumbbell, so I've, I've prepared well on both. And um, you know, my, my overhead's been steadily improving. It's, it's, it's not my strongest event by any means, but I, I think I'm good enough to like maybe get joint second or third place on it. And I think if I can win the first two events, get second place on the deadlift, I think that'll be good enough to, to put me into the final. Okay, excellent, excellent. And, yeah, sorry. No, carry on. No, no, I was just, just going <laughs> to ask, because this is the thing that, that, well, I think I'm most looking forward to seeing uh, is event five. I mean, it must be tough for the athletes, but as a spectator, it's a, you know, it's a fantastic event. Uh, to see these head-to-head -head stones, is it, is it still last? Because all we've got information here is last man standing. Yeah, so, I presume so it's the, stone. the, stone, the stones is last man standing. Um, just so after four events, the winner automatically gets to go to the final. Mm -hmm. So they're done. Fourth and fifth are out of the competition, and then you've got second and third going head-to-head -head with a 180 kilo stone over a 1.4. I think it's a 1.4 meter yoke or like a bar set at 1.4 yeah. meters, um, back and forth, you have 20 seconds to complete the lift. If you can't get it done in 20 seconds, then you're eliminated. Mm. Wow. That's I'm, I'm not a big fan <laughs> of it. I, I, think, I think it will be quite exciting to watch, but in terms of being fair, I don't think it's fair. The, the guys that get to the final after four events have a huge advantage. Mm -hmm. The guys, whoever gets through in second place winning the stones, if they've had a tough battle, that's going to destroy them yes, for the final. Okay. And also, you could be in third place, 10 points behind second, and still make the final by winning the stones, which, hmm. again, it kind of, it's unfair on the whole competition, in my, in my opinion. And hmm. things like this. I, I see why people kind of enjoy it, and I think maybe it would be a great event as a decider if it was, say, joint on points. You know, All right, a yeah, tiebreaker. And, mm -hmm. and done as like a tiebreaker event. I think that would be like a real cool way of, of splitting them. But I don't like it as a, as a, just a, a fifth event. I, I personally, I don't even like the groups because the, 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 the TV kind of get annoyed because some of the top guys will start taking it easy once they've qualified. I, I would like to see Strongman maybe have less guys competing at World's Strongest Man, but go, say, say 20 guys going head-to-head -head over 8 to 12 events. Mm, right, and okay. really find out who is the best strength athlete in the world across a variety of different events. Yeah, Because the, the final this yeah. year is just five events. For other events, you could select events to, to kind of favour a lot of guys. But over 12 events, you can't have any hiding places. You know, you've got to be the best all round. And yeah, that's everyone, everyone will be doing the same events as well. A bit more like CrossFit, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I mean, even if they don't want to tell the events, you know, early on, you can keep the events as a bit more of a surprise. But then when you've got that greater kind of amount of events, you, you really find out who's the best then. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, and then there's, that's a there's great format. No, there's, there's nowhere to hide by doing that. You can't have guys like Brian and Thor taking it easy because they're going to be battling for their overall position. Hmm. Yeah, no, it's, it sounds like a solid format. That's a good idea. I'm gonna, I've been invited we'll credit to you a, with that. We'll credit you with that. <laughs> <laughs> I've been invited to a meeting with the um, producers and the referees and stuff after the comp to um, to kind of give my opinion on a few things. They're, 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 they're always open-minded to listening and stuff, so it'd be good to kind of just get my ideas across and see what they say. Now, your, your your friend Mark Felix will be here as well, isn't he? Mark is here, yes, from this yeah. morning. Um, you need to jar him about his uh, his constant retiral from World's Strongest Man, <laughs> oh, and no, then he's, then he's, showing up. <laughs> he, he retired at the Brits, didn't he? Yeah. 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 And talking about that, so I well, he retired in December as well when I did, spoke to yes, him in, he did. Uh, in the at, uh, uh, official Strongman Games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But talking about, I have to say, I mean, I, I absolutely love Mark. Mark is a very good friend of mine. Um, he's a great strong man but personally I, I don't know how he got invited there was other British guys probably should have been invited over him this year that's not me putting Mark down but mm -hmm. it's one of the things it's what I keep saying this is going to be my last worlds unless things change and it's because of all these kind of little things that go on 
Mm. You know, right, yes. guys like Paul Smith placed above him at the British, not invited. But guys, you know, there's there's a lot of guys that that beat Mark in at the Britain's Strongest Man, and Mark announced his retirement, and then it, it, it's kind of holding the development of those guys back. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, interesting I mean, points. I, I'm in I'm in good shape, and I feel like I can challenge. But if I don't challenge, then it's it's time to give up and let the younger guys kind of come through because mm. I don't want to sort of just come here and make up numbers. Yes, you know, sure. I, I sort of, I've, I've, you know, I had a few years where you sort of gaining that experience, and then I came fourth in 2011. In 2012, I was on for like a podium position. My training was going great. Unfortunately, I got injured before I got here. And then I've had a few years of trying to come back from injuries where I've made a few finals, but not been as competitive as I like. And this year, I've just given everything. I've really peaked quite well. Mm -hmm. And if I can't go in and perform well, then it, it, it's it's time to, you know, hang it up and um, let the younger guys kind of get their experience and get their chance to, to compete. We can't keep sending me and Felix and Terry and, you know, to, to World Strikes Around. We need those younger guys coming through. Tom Stoltman, he's going to be, you know, doing hopefully really well this year. We've got so many good up-and-coming youngsters in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, if they're beating us in the, the national comps, then they deserve their shot. Hmm. Speaking of the Stoltmans, uh, have you got your money on either one? Which one do you think will make the final? Well, I, I believe any. both of them can. They're both such good stone lifters, which mm. gives them a great advantage. I think Luke can make the final. He's going to have a tough battle with, like, I think, um, Rob Kearney in that group. But I think Luke's a better stone lifter. Mm. And I think it could come down to that. And, you know, Tom's as good a stone lifter as anyone. Yes. Um, so I think he's got a great chance of getting the final, get against the final. Mm. Oh, yeah. No, it's, well, so are you saying, sorry to go back one step, are you saying then that this might not be the last time we, we see you at Worlds? If things change, if mm -hmm. the format's changed, if I, if I can perform, if I perform really well, yes, and the format changes as well, and they kind of stop all this kind of like stupid stuff that, that goes on, you know, I, I spoke to um, Cale Beck from Starting Strongman, and he knew there was Farmer's Walk in this competition two weeks before I did. <laughs> right, okay. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of the competitors, and I didn't know this, and, and you, you knew, you know, it's, to me, things like that, it, it, it's bullshit, and I, I'm fed up with all that kind of stuff that some people hear stuff, you know, there's there's things that go on, the, 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 the selection process of athletes, you know, there's there's guys that should be here that aren't, and there's guys that shouldn't be that, that are, um, well, I mean, you've still got the best guys, don't get me wrong, you know, mm -hmm. but I, I think the, pro the process to get to Worlds should be hard, I think maybe just 20 guys genuinely the top 20 guys in the world make it hard to get to and then have a, a real tough competition they either eight to 12 events I, I say 12 events but you know eight to 12 events to really see who is the best mm -hmm. and you know they don't need heats because the heats they say are like you know they get boring when people kind of run away with the heat and then they do all these stupid events to to make it like a game show rather than a than a proper sport Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if they keep doing stuff like that, then I'm not even interested in coming back because there's better one-day shows to do now. You know, you've got the competition in Dubai, you've got the Arnolds, you've got the Giants live shows. They're all great shows. Yes. Um, yeah, there's and, a lot on the calendar these years, uh, these days, I must say. With social media now, World's Strongest Man isn't as, as important as it maybe was. And also, I don't like that we have to wait till Christmas to watch it. You mm -hmm. know, I've got to kind of keep a lid on, on results. And in yeah. America, it's been aired in a month's time. Yeah, in the UK, we've got to wait till Christmas, which... I almost think it should be the format, like like live. You know how the, like, the big stadium I, shows with a huge I crowd... I'd love to see that have, you know... Because I, I'd like to get into, like, punditry and commentating and stuff like that anyway. So it'd be perfect yeah. kind of thing for me to kind of go in <laughs> when I'm done with competing. But um, if any of the World's Strongest Man guys are watching and interested, I'll <laughs> hop up to the job. <laughs> I love you all, really. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, didn't mean all that stuff. <laughs> um, I, I, do, I do genuinely appreciate the, the opportunities World's Strongest Man has given me, but I think for the sport to progress and get bigger yes. and get more popular, we need to make some changes. You know, it's not the 1980s anymore where we're watching Jeff Capes on BBC One at Christmas. Yes, well, there's yeah. nothing wrong with constructive watch... criticism as well and, and constructive and that's, feedback. That's, that's how that's things that's progress. You know, it's, mm. it's, it's the times have evolved, not just the sport has evolved, but the way people watch TV has evolved. Yes, oh, massively. So, you know, we don't, you look how many sports now do things live. Mm. You know, imagine the boxing the other night, if that was shown at Christmas, that would be ridiculous. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
No, yeah. yeah. No, definitely, definitely rising the whole live streaming thing as as we've we've experienced and we've been trying to live stream as much stuff as possible um, this year as well. Okay, well, we'll probably wrap things up a little bit now. Just tell us about the weather. How's how's the weather there while we shoot the breeze? Um, it's it's really hot and humid. Um, yeah. Humidity. As soon as we got off the plane, you kind of really hit you. It's a little bit cloudy today. I'll give you a quick look outside. But um, the sun's well, trying to get. Well, it's better than what we've got here. I can tell you that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was horrible yesterday when we left, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. No, that's um, good. It's going to be hot. There, there are like a number of thunderstorms kind of forecast. But okay. Do you think it, it's whole, Do you think it's going to be unbearable? Do you think it's going to affect again athletes and performance and stuff? The the heat. Or? I don't think it's, going to, it's not going to be any worse than the Philippines last year. Yeah. So uh, you know, I'm I'm used to these kind of conditions competing at World's Strongest Man. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always somewhere hot and humid. You know, nine times out of ten. So. My, you know, I'm I'm not one for going out sunbathing and staying by the pool or anything like that. I, I literally hide in the hotel room or hide in the tent. <laughs> uh, I mean, I annoy Liz because I get a tan so easily. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm obviously here to do a job. It's not I'm not here for a holiday. No, so, yeah, no, for sure. You know, and I genuinely I've I've come in in good shape and I want to give it my all, especially if it's going to be my last one. No, of course, mate. Well, we wish you all the best. And yeah, hundred percent. We've uh, we're obviously you, rooting for you. We've got a couple of new uh, service athletes there. You can say hello to for us. Uh, we've got uh, a Norwegian guy, Oli Martin Christiansen. Oh, uh, I won't be too nice to him because he's in my group. Oh, is he? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you, you're in before him, so you're <laughs> you automatically get preference. Um, and then we've got uh, Sigfus Sigfus Fostal yeah, from Sigfus Iceland. He, he he actually um, messaged me asking. What you guys were like, so um, oh, I thought he oh, well, hope you didn't tell him the truth. <laughs> <laughs> He's trapped now. We've got him. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's good. That's um, cool. No, yeah, he he didn't he didn't say who he spoke to. He said he spoke to someone and uh, read a glowing report. So, you know, all good. <laughs> I'll give you that fiver later. <laughs> but anyway, mate, right. All the best. We'll uh, we'll try catch up with you at some point uh, in the next cool, few days, man. and uh, yeah, good luck. Yeah, thank very, very best much. of luck and thank you for your time. We know you're busy, so appreciate that. No worries, guys. I'll speak to you soon. Okay, okay. take care. Bye-bye. Right, Cheers. say goodbye Bye. to Liz Bye. as well. Cheers. Bye.